All right, scholars, this is our listen and respond for red and yellow group. Make sure you write your name at the top of the paper. Make sure you put the date. Um, today is the 28th, I think, 2019. Then we're gonna write the title of our story, Elephants Cannot Dance. So go ahead and copy that down into the blank. Elephants cannot dance. Please make sure you have that title written down so I know which paper this is. And also make sure your name is on it. So now we're ready to get started. So we're gonna preview. So let's go ahead and read it in order. As college ready readers, we always use college ready sentences. We always support our ideas with evidence from the text. So to do this, we're gonna preview our book first. Readers always collect clues before they get started reading. Look at the front and back covers of the book before you start reading or listening to the story and then fill in the chart below. So the question says, what do you think this book is going to be about? And why do you think this? I think this book will be about blank. I think this because blank. So go ahead and fill this in. So the cover has an elephant sitting here. He looks kind of upset. And this looks like a little pig and she's wearing a ballerina costume and she seems very happy because she's smiling. Let's see what's on the back. So it says, Gerald is careful. Piggy is not. Piggy cannot help smiling. Gerald can. Gerald worries so that Piggy does not have to. Gerald and Piggy are best friends. In Elephants Cannot Dance, Piggy tries to teach Gerald some new moves. But will Gerald teach Piggy something even more important? So go ahead and write in what you think this book is going to be about based off of what you see on the cover and what you read on the back. And then tell me why you think this. I think this book will be about blank. I think this because blank. Once you've finished that, you can hop back into it and we can get started reading. Gerald! Ah! Let's dance! I can teach you. I am teaching all my friends. I would love to learn how to dance. But elephants cannot dance. You are kidding me. No. Look it up. Page 11. Gerald, it does not say that you cannot try. You are right, Piggy. I can try to dance. I will try to dance. Let's dance. Oof. Okay, let's go. Jump with me when I count to three. One, two, three. Jump. Jump. You were a little late on the jump. I was a little late on the jump. We will try again. We will try again. Move your arms this way. We will try again. We will try again. Lift your leg this way. We will try again. We will try again. Up, up, down, down. All right, so I'm gonna pause here. Let's go ahead and fill in some of our charts. We have the characters, so it says characters and setting. Readers know that understanding the characters and setting of a story will help them understand what is going on in the story. So list two characters from the story. So I know that we have uh, Piggy and Gerald. So then it wants to know, what do you know about them? Inner traits and outer traits. So remember, if you're getting stuck on this inner traits and outer traits, you can look in your reader's journal. I'm writing this in case you don't remember so that you, you don't have to write this part on your paper. This is just so you see if you can't understand what I'm saying that maybe you can look it up. So your reader's journal and under the character traits notes. There you can find out what is an inner trait and what is an outer trait. Remember, inner traits are things that we can tell by what the character does, what they say, how they act. This is not something you can tell by looking at a person. And outer traits, those are things that we can tell by looking at them. So an outer trait about Piggy is she's a pig. And an outer trait about Gerald is 
he is an elephant, right? I can tell that by looking at them and I can see that with my eyes. So those are outer traits. I want you to come up with an inner trait for each one and write those in the blank. What is the setting of the story? This one's kind of tricky because they don't really tell us. So we just kind of have to like use our imaginations and use what we know about the world in order to decide where the setting is. Remember, the setting of the story is where the story takes place. It's going to be a location, like a place you can go. It's a place, right? So the setting of the story is... Let's see. So this book is a little different. It doesn't even have any background pictures. It's just like a white background. But I know that when people, when I hang out with my friends I, and I'm doing something like dancing, I could be doing that at a gym. I could be doing that at school. I could be doing that at my house. So any of those are logical places for our setting. So you could put any of those down or you could come up with your own as long as it makes sense for what's happening in the story. All right. So now we're ready to make a prediction. Readers always guess what might happen next. What do you think might happen next? So this part right here is going to match exactly what I'm about to write. If yours does not say the same thing that I'm about to write here, you're going to get this wrong because I want everybody to be on the same page to set us up for the next question in this box, right? So if you don't write what I write here, your prediction isn't going to make sense. So I need you to have the same thing that I write here. This is kind of an... This, this blank is setting us up to answer the, to make a prediction, okay? So what I'm noticing has, it says blank has happened in the story. So something I think might happen next is blank. So something that I'm noticing that's happening is Gerald keeps making mistakes. So yours should match exactly what mine says, right? This part right here with the stars, you do not have to put the stars. I'm just putting that there to show you that's where I want to match. So I'm going to go ahead and spell it for you. Gerald keeps making mistakes. Gerald is G-E-R-A-L-D. Keeps, K-E-E-P-S, making, M-A-K-I-N-G, mistakes, M-I-S-T-A-K-E-S. Gerald keeps making mistakes has happened in the story. So something I think might happen next is, so what do you think that he might do next? What do you think that Piggy might do next? Based off of what just happened, that he keeps making those mistakes. Go ahead and fill that in. This part right here is going to be your own thoughts and feelings about what you think might happen next based off of this sentence. Gerald keeps making mistakes. All right, let's go ahead and see what happens next. Spin, spin, stop, stop. Forward, forward, backward, backward. Wiggle, waggle, wiggle, waggle. Robot walk, robot walk. Enough. I have tried and tried and tried and tried and tried. But I am an elephant and elephants cannot dance. Plop. Oh, Gerald. Hello. We are ready to learn some moves. I am sorry, I cannot teach you now. My friend is sad. Silly, we do not want you to teach us. We want to learn the elephant. Hmm? Teach me, please. Me too. Me three. More feeling. Keep trying. You are getting it. The end. All right. So now we are on to the next part of our uh, packet here and it says visualize that's what's up here in this corner so visualize readers always think about how this story might look in their heads tell me what you are seeing as you read so if you get stuck on this you have notes in your notebook that are called visualization so look for this word in your notebook notes okay and those will help you understand what this means if you're feeling stuck and my directions don't help you 
So when we visualize, you're telling me what I'm seeing. You don't tell me it looks cool, it looks scary. You're going to describe what it looks like. So what is something that makes something look cool? What's happening that looks cool? What's happening that makes you know that somebody's scared? So like an example would be if I know someone's, if it looks scary, maybe it's dark. Maybe there's a lot of shadows. Maybe people are like, have a funny look on their face, like their eyes are really wide. Those are all things that I would see if I saw someone in a scary place, right? So you're telling me what I would see if I were there. All right, so let's go. What do you think this part of the story might look like? I'm imagining the part in the story where blank is happening. I'm imagining it looks like blank. Three things to describe this are blank, blank, and blank. All right, so again, right here, this part is going to match what I'm about to write. This part is going to be your own thoughts. This one is going to, can match or it doesn't have to. And then this is your own thought. This is your own thought. All right, so I'm imagining the part in the story where Gerald yells enough is happening. So this part is what I want you to copy down in this first blank. Make sure you copy exactly what I have here because if you don't, it's going to be very confusing when you're answering these next questions and you're going to get them wrong. So I'm imagining the part in the story where Gerald yells enough. Gerald is G-E-R-A-L-D, yells, Y-E-L-L-S, enough, E-N-O-U-G-H. So I'm imagining that part where Gerald is fed up with the dancing, right? And he yells enough. I'm imagining it looks like, tell me what you think this looks like. If you need to, you can go back to that page and look at what's happening. Look at the expressions and see what you think this looks like. How would you describe this if I wasn't able to see this? What does it look like? So three things to describe this are, he looks like he's kind of frustrated, right? So what does someone look like when they're frustrated? So he has like an exasperated look on his face. So Gerald looks exasperated. in his face. So when you have an exasperated look on your face, it means your face is like stressed, you look worried on your face, like maybe you're frowning. So you could also write that down. So now I want you to come up with two other things and explain what it looks like. Go ahead and fill those out. And then when you're done with that part, you're ready to come on to summarize. Summarize means readers think about the most important parts of a book. So this you can find in your beginning, middle, end notes. Okay? If you're looking in your notebook and you need some help, readers think about the most important parts of a book. In your own words, give me a summary of the story you just listened to. Now, this is something I want to draw attention to because a lot of us are doing this wrong. Please make sure you're paying attention.